Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, Mr. Tho here. Got another tutorial for you. We're going to continue Flappy Bird building. I have uploaded a couple videos for you, especially this one on loops and arrays is super important. If you don't know how to do for loops or arrays in Java, you are going to want to watch that video. Um, so I also, um, I don't know if you guys have noticed, I've uploaded the repository with all of my code throughout each video. So this is the one we're on right now. But I also put a arrays tutorial. So this is kind of just a fun one to just copy down and just put that into the editor. Just put a, a blank one. And you can just kind of run it and see um, what it does. So you got all of these different circles being created and that's all being done with just these arrays. So you might look at the code and it's not very long but it does have a little bit of the confusing stuff. So if you like the uh, arrays and you want to use them, you've really got to take some time to just understand how they work. So it'll require um, declaring them, initializing them, um, filling them up because initially they'll all be zeros, so you got to put values in, and that to do that we use a loop. And this is by far the most standard way to write a loop in Java, so you'll see that all the time. And you'll again use that same loop when you actually get to the control part of your um, game. So again, even in the draw, you're going to be using the same references. So um, let's go ahead and start the tutorial. So where we left off was, let's see, where were we? Um, sorry, open, reset, flappy three. Here we are. So where we left off, we were just here at these pipes. And I did extend the length of those pipes, so we're all good on that. So now we can move them up and down. We'll widen that gap. Let's just do that before we even start. So this is the distance between. So let's make that a 680 just to make sure that, OK. Well, now you can't see the other one. But there's a plenty of gap for Flappy to fit through, which is actually Kirby. Kirby Bird, that's what we're going to call this one. OK, so you guys ready to get started? I can't hear you because you're not there. I'm talking to myself in my classroom like a weirdo. All right, so int, So what you're going to do is you're going to write down int and two parentheses. And what that actually does is it makes an array, and you're going to name them. So let's call it pipe x, and we'll call the other one pipe y. We're going to have two arrays. So this will be two init, uh, declare. This is called declare two arrays. And they're of type int, so they're, the, they're just going to be whole numbers. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to um, create them. So it's, it's weird. You could do this in one line, but it's better to do it outside. So what we're going to do is we're going to do pipe x equals new int with the brackets. This time, you have to tell the computer how big to make it. So I need to tell the person, OK, if I'm going to make a new array, I need to tell it how long to make it. So this will be basically an array of length 4. So it'll be like 0, 0, 0, 0. OK, and just so we're clear, this one will have an index of 0, but this will have an index of 1. So that means that the last one will have an index of what? What? Yep, that's right, 3. 0, 1, 2, 3. So length 4, but the biggest index is 3. So keep that under your pillow while you start to dream about your next game. OK, so what we're also going to do is we're going to use the same length. So I'm going to do pipe x dot length. This is kind of a cool trick. So basically, instead of putting in 4 here, since that is the length of pipe x array, I'm just going to say, hey, you know what? I'm just going to go with whatever you are dot length. So for example, if I made that 6, now this is a 6. So I don't have to change it. So that's how I like to code. So hopefully you do too. OK, so again, remember, everything in our setup only gets run once. So only, so one time. These are all one time run. And the void draw is what happens the main game. So for in here, we're just creating it. So we've now declared it, and then we've initialized it. So now we're going to populate it. So let's go ahead and populate. So with values, we'll say. So to do that, we're going to use a for loop. So we'll go for int i equals 0. i is less than, we'll go pipe x dot length. Spell it right. And you'll see it's green, so it knows what I mean. And there you go. All right. So what are we going to do? Well, what we're actually going to do is we're going to do pipe x parenthesis, and this time you're going to put an i inside. So the i is going to be from here. 
So it starts at 0. So the first value in that empty array is going to equal, um, let's do it 200 times i. 200 and i. OK, 200 times i. And the pipe y will do the same way. But we're going to do, instead of doing a fixed value, let's do a um, random number. And we'll do it anywhere from negative, oh, let's say 350 to 0. OK, now you'll notice, uh, if you've used the random function before, you know it, it spits out a float, which is a decimal number. And in computers, you can't put a, a float into a position where it's expecting an int. So what we have to do is we convert it to an int by typing parentheses int, and nothing between here, no spaces, no multiplication. So this is called casting. And basically, you're changing the value of the float, or the, the type of this, from a float to an integer. Okay, so that should actually work. And so now, it doesn't actually do that, just checking the count to make sure it compiles right. So now we can go ahead and copy this here, and we're going to go ahead and move to the draw function. So the main game loop is where all the, the action happens. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to copy this for loop, and instead of putting this inside of the for loop, because now we're going to be able to control all of these pipes, let's copy this part and paste that inside here. So this will give us all these images, but we're going to move them. So these are the x and the y, so originally it's at 0, 0, because that's what I was just testing. So we're going to do pipe x i, and we'll do pipe y i. And I'm going to go ahead and copy that. Whoops. Copy, and then we'll go ahead and paste that. Oops, that was clever. Okay, pipe i and then a plus 680. So let's see what happens. Yay, we've got pipes everywhere. Okay, so, so far so good. The only thing is I don't want them to start right here. I want them to start off the screen. So what we're going to do is where we, these are the x-coordinates. So let's go up to where we create the x-coordinates. And let's just add the width of the screen. So width plus 200i. That'll get them off the screen. Now you can't see them. But we know they're there because we just moved them. So let's make them move. So how do we make them move? So again, in the draw function where all your main stuff is happening. And this is all going to take place inside this for loop. So if you try to do what I'm going to do outside this brace right here on line 47, it will not work. Because remember, this right here is a counting variable. It's a loop variable. It's going to disappear as soon as this is closed. So we want to make sure that we do all of our references to i inside of here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do pipe x i, just like we did with the background, and we're going to make it move to the left. And let's see if that works. And of course, it, of course it works. We wouldn't be making a video about it if it didn't work. I mean, who's going to subscribe to us if we don't even know how to make pipes move across the screen? Certainly not my students. Um, I'm going to speed it up just a little bit because... Uh, I'm going to be checking this a lot, and I want to make sure that it's moving a little quicker. Okay. Oh, that looks pretty hard. Whoosh. Yes. Yes, I am very good at video games. I don't just build them. I play them. So in case you're wondering the skills, yep. I'm old, but I got skills. All right. So now what? Um, actually, you notice that they disappeared at the end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, hey, if pipe xi is less than, let's say, negative 200, I don't really know what we're going to end up being, but we'll start with that. Let's reset it. So we'll go pipe x i, and we'll just do width um, plus, I guess we could just leave it at width, because that's off the screen. Let's see if that works. So here comes Flappy Bird. I'll just go ahead and let him go through. Oh, no, I've got them on top of each other. You see that? How many of these pipes do I have? I have six. Okay, so let's try five. <laughs> so this is the problem when you're you got to make sure that the ones that you when this gets to the end of the array it doesn't overlap and it looks like that's the problem. So five times two. I could probably do the math, but I don't really need to because I just randomly trialed and errored it. So it looks like it looks pretty good to me. So actually, that looks pretty awesome right there. I think that that that'll do it. Pretty sure that'll do it. So we'll go ahead and leave that alone. And we'll just go to the next video. So I hope you guys enjoyed that.
pipes are moving quickly. You don't need to move that fast now, so by the way, you can... I like to have it a little faster than the background, but you can put that back now. That Now that you know it's working, you can lower it down a little bit. So that looks cool to me. I like the background to be slower than the foreground because it makes it like depth perception or something. All right, so anyways, that's it for this tutorial. The next one, we'll talk about keeping score, and also we'll talk about collision detection. That's going to be a hard one. All right, see you on the next one. Peace.